And the reason for that is because Ethereum is going to succeed. It's going to succeed in being a viable platform for writing unstoppable code. And the next Silk Road will be fueled by DAI, will be running on Swarm, will use Whisper Communications, will be a fully autonomous DAP without administrators that you can give two life sentences plus 40. And it will be unstoppable. And I strongly believe in these things. I believe in freedom of expression and freedom of speech and creating diverse environments where we all have powers that can't be taken away from us. And so one of the things that fascinated me about Ethereum from the very beginning was this idea of unstoppable code. You may have heard the slogan, unstoppable code. It was the first two words on the website during the launch, and I think it informs a lot of the people who got involved in this project early on. It's the same thing that makes me interested in Bitcoin, and that got me started on this journey. The idea of having speech that is uncensorable, not because you ask nicely, not because anybody likes what you have to say, but because they simply can't stop you. And that's a very powerful thing. And it's more necessary than ever in today's world. We're gradually sliding into crisis after crisis. We're seeing a rise of totalitarianism. And as a result, it's never been more important to give people all over the world the tools to be able to express themselves, to assert their rights, and to be sovereign. Right now, most of the environment in Ethereum is very, very kumbaya. I love it. Unicorns, puffy corns, puffies and rainbows. I love it. This beautiful wellspring of creativity, passion, joy, this sense of possibility. It's not going to last. And part of the reason it's not going to last is because what we're doing here is important. And it seizes power. It seizes power on behalf of individuals, but it seizes power from forms of power. Governments, corporations, states, associations, cultures, religions, countries. It seizes power from these big things and gives them to little people. And sooner or later, some of the people who are losing power in this equation, unearned power, undeserved power, abusively applied power, will start fighting back. And at that point, we're going to find out how unstoppable the code is. So what kind of code needs to be unstoppable? What kind of code do we need to build that is, in fact, unstoppable? Just like in free speech, the only speech worth protecting is that which offends, deeply offends. Innocuous speech does not require protection. In some cases, it doesn't even deserve it. <laughs> Journalism is speaking the things people don't want you to publish. Everything else is public relations. You've heard that quote? The only speech worth protecting is the speech people don't want to hear. and The only code that needs to be unstoppable is code that someone's trying to stop. And that's worthwhile. That's exciting. Governance is the killer app for Ethereum, and Unstoppable Code is also the killer app for Ethereum, but between them, there is this very subtle tension. And that tension doesn't appear 
until you start doing interesting things. You see, there used to be a time when Bitcoin hadn't offended too many people. We were still in the laughing at us stage, the ridicule stage of development. And then something interesting happened called the Silk Road. How many people have heard of the Silk Road? All of you. Very good. I won't ask. I'm sure it was just insulin and asthma inhalers. Good stuff you were buying. And you should. The Silk Road brought Bitcoin to the limelight prematurely, scared off a lot of Bitcoiners, and generated a ton of bad publicity that haunts Bitcoin to this day, because it associated the spending of money with the consumption of narcotics. <laughs> and of course, if you want to malign a technology, drugs is step one. Right? Child abuse is probably step two, terrorism is step three. You might rearrange them depending on the proclivities of your government. But if you want to wrap up a nice big dollop of censorship, you're going to pick one of those three wrappings to deliver it to the sheep and tell them why this thing needs to be stopped. You know, I'm no prude when it comes to consumption of narcotics and buying things in underground black markets. I understand. I like to think of these things as biology. Right? Did you know that dolphins get high? So, you know puffer fish, right? And if you annoy them, they puff up. They also excrete a, a toxin on the surface of their skin that is, let's say, annoying at least, but potentially fatal to most fish, except dolphins. Dolphins get high off puffer poison. So what they do is they get in a circle, they find a puffer fish, and then they squeeze it in their mouth until it gets annoying and releases a bit of venom, and they puffer, puffer, pass. <laughs> puffer, puffer, pass. Because, you know, they, they understand the etiquette of puffer chewing. <laughs> And, and so, like, if we were the first species to not get high, that would be an anomaly. Because evolutionary speaking, there is no species that doesn't get high. So when it comes to drug markets, I'm a pragmatist. Like, there's a reason people want to use drug markets. And the reason is really simple. You can't get stabbed over TCPIP. It's really simple. It's all about violence. And it has a very interesting effect on markets because it immediately removes violence, which removes a lot of the risk-based premium, driving prices out down and driving organized crime out of the market. Now, I'm not going to try and persuade other people that we should legalize this stuff. Colorado's doing a pretty good job at it. What I'm going to try and persuade people is that these things will exist. They will keep happening. They will happen because there's always been demand, there will always be supply, and where demand and supply exist, markets emerge always. And so what do we do about that? And what do we do about that as a community that's building platforms of code that are potentially unstoppable? Because right after the Silk Road happened, the conversation around Bitcoin changed rapidly. Until then, quite a few large corporations were talking about it. And then they came up with this great phrase, which is, well, we're more interested in the technology behind Bitcoin, the blockchain. Right? Which is the sound of 10,000 marketing officers backpedaling furiously because they just read the article about drug markets and they're like, oh shit. Take it off all the posters. 
Well, I've got news for you. We're interested in the technology behind Ethereum, smart contracts. That is a phrase you're going to hear in the next few years. People are going to start backpedaling furiously. And the reason for that is because Ethereum is going to succeed. It's going to succeed in being a viable platform for writing unstoppable code. And the next Silk Road will be fueled by DAI, will be running on Swarm, will use Whisper communications, will be a fully autonomous DAP without administrators that you can give two life sentences plus 40. And it will be unstoppable. And the moment people figure this out, there's going to be calls to every prominent person in Ethereum, every committee, foundation, authority, governance, body, anyone who seems to have any control, and they're going to say, yeah, that's, that's cute, but stop it. Yeah? You've, you've had your fun. Um, we heard you on Stop the Code, yada yada, smart contracts, dabs, they said, just stop it, okay? Because now it's a drug market. You got to stop it. And most of the people in Ethereum, if they're smart, are going to go, well, I can't, won't, can't, won't. What's the difference between can't and won't? What's the difference between can't and won't? Two life sentences plus 40 years.